Coming up on this week's news, an electrician who gave a plasterer an electric shock falsely claimed to have a gold JIB card. The electrical trades working on a warship call off their strike after winning a pay rise, and before they were famous, they trained as sparks. We name the celebrities who started out on the tools. Welcome to Electrical News Weekly in association with Solar Trade Sales, your easy one-stop shop for all things solar. Whether you're listening in the van, on site, or down at the wholesale counter, I'm Joe Robinson, and I've been through the best of the electrical industry news to save you the trouble. And as always, if you think you've spotted the two words that I've been challenged to slip into this week's show, comment with them below for the chance to win a prize. A Scunthorpe electrician who gave a plasterer an electric shock with his shoddy work was falsely claiming to have a gold JIB card. Robbie Tomlinson of Woodland View Scunthorpe admitted four offences of fraudulent trading by claiming he was qualified to carry out specialist electrical work for which he was not certified to do. In court this week, Tomlinson was given a suspended prison sentence and ordered to pay six customers compensation of nearly £13,000. His business, WHJ Building Solutions Limited, was also prosecuted by North Lincolnshire Council Trading Standards for being in breach of consumer protection rules. Grimsby Crown Court heard Tom Tomlinson carried out work of such poor quality, other electricians had to be paid by customers to carry out the work properly. Prosecuting, Robin Kingham said a plasterer suffered an electric shock due to faulty wiring caused by his shoddy work. The court heard that the craftsman was fortunately not seriously hurt. The prosecutor said Tomlinson took money up front from customers and failed to carry out the work in a period from 2019 to 2020. He claimed to be part of a competent person scheme but was not registered, the prosecuting barrister said. A number of clients were promised certificates for work carried out or for inspections but they never materialised. Mr Kingham said his website and the livery on his van claimed falsely that Tomlinson was registered to carry out specialist inspection work. The projects were in North Lincolnshire area and further afield in Leeds, the court heard. One landlord with 11 properties asked for certificates for electrical wiring, but not all were forthcoming. In June 2022, he claimed to North Lincolnshire Council trading officers that he had a gold card with the Joint Industry Board. Defending, Tomlinson's lawyer Sarah Barlow said her client was no rogue trader. He's a trained and qualified electrician who's done satisfactory work throughout his career, but in this particular case, he let his desire to succeed overtake his capability. He tried to make the best of himself, but got it very wrong indeed. She pointed out that Tomlinson does work for police installing CCTV camera systems and for North Lincolnshire Council. However, recorder Anthony Dunn said Tomlinson had carried out what he termed incomplete and substandard work. He said he had failed to refund money and had lied to customers over a prolonged period. As well as the compensation and a 12-month suspended prison sentence, he ordered Tomlinson to do 120 hours of community work. In other news, electricians wiring up a new warship are cock hoop They've called off their strike after winning pay increases worth up to 22.8%. The 30 employees of CBL Cable Contractors Limited were due to stop their work on a Royal Navy Type 26 frigate at two shipyards on the Clyde. They had planned strike action throughout January, February and March because they weren't being paid the so-called shipyard rate by employer BAE Systems. The deal will see BAE increase their pay by over £3 an hour. The frigates are part of a huge £4.2 billion order for five ships from the Ministry of Defence. There's going to be a whole lot more electrical instruction in East Anglia from now on, thanks to an agreement between Develop Training and JTL. JTL's new £1.5 million training centre in Norwich will host a range of new courses from Develop. These include low and high voltage electrical, confined spaces, working at height and health and safety. The facility was opened in November to satisfy the increasing demand in the region. It's hoped the centre will help plug the skills gap in East Anglia. In product news, Click Skullmore has unveiled an REC isolator switch for connecting consumer unit tails to the supply. In several regions of the UK, isolator units like this one have become an integral component of the residential power setup. These units feature a front cover divided into two segments, allowing you to seal and lock off their respective ends, effectively halting any unauthorised access. Enabling the connection of the supply tails directly to the REC unit obviates the need for repetitive visits by contractors and supply authorities to establish the final connection. The lid can be propped open using the rotatable tab, allowing the removal of the split cover without being impeded. 
As you'd expect, the unit includes a 100 amp main switch and an SPD module. It also features six 32mm knockouts and a 60x60mm square knockout in the back, compatible with CUC EPS. Rolex EV is running a promo this month with prizes worth £8,000. To enter, you have to post a photo of an installation of one of the brand's chargers on social media and tag Rolex by the 11th of February. And well, that's it. You can enter as many times as you like, as long as they're separate charger installs, obs. First prize is a Rolex EV voucher worth £5,000. The second one is worth £2,500. And the third is a voucher for Kubev Smart and Cable worth £500. I've popped a link to the promo in the show notes. Speaking of winning things, this year's 30 Under 30 award, supported by the good people at Luceco Group, is still open for entries. Now in its third year, this prestigious event recognises and rewards those young people who are going to carry the flame of the electric electrical industry into the future. Maybe you know someone who set up their own business in a unique niche of the industry or who gives back to their local community. Maybe it's simply an apprentice or a full-time learner just starting out on their journey but already impressing with their commitment and tenacity. Or maybe it's someone who's had to overcome serious adversity to succeed in their chosen career. Whatever the case, if you think you know a worthy winner, then get your entry submitted by clicking the link in the description. We've streamlined the entry process this year so it couldn't be easier. Who knows, maybe you and your nominee could be joining us at the next exciting winners event. Entries close on the 29th of February and the awards will be announced on the 3rd of April. The clock is ticking, so don't delay. And finally, can you name any celebrities who were electricians before they were famous? Well, we can, thanks to the good people at City and Guilds who've compiled the definitive list. First off, there's Del Boy himself, Sir David Jason of Only Fools and Horses fame, trained as an electrician for six years before quitting to take up acting in 1962. Next, there's England star Stuart Pearce, or as football fans affectionately call him, Psycho. He was like a grizzly bear with a toothache on the pitch, that guy. But he was actually a fully trained electrician when he signed for Nottingham Forest. He famously advertised his electrical services in the Matchday programme. Another soccer star, the late Sir Bobby Charlton, trained as an apprentice electrical engineer. Football didn't pay so well in the early days, so in the off-season, he'd simply pick up the tools again. The great Alfred Hitchcock was an apprentice electrician at a company called Henley's, which made appliances. It said the role prepared him technically for his future as a film director. And finally, the most famous non-electrician of all, the king, no less. No, no, not that one. I'm talking about the king, Elvis Presley. The young Elvis drove a lorry for a contracting firm in Memphis called Crown Electric. He was planning to train as a spark, but then, well, you know the rest. The poor lad took a wrong turn and settled for being a wandering minstrel instead. At times, Elvis must have pondered what his life would have been like had he taken to the tools. In fact, it must have been always on his mind. I oh, thank you very much. <laughs> Before we go, a reminder that we're in the market for your stories, your projects, and your recommendations, as we'd like to share them with the wider eFix community. In February, we're focusing on residential solar and battery installs. Have you installed a plant room to rival Gary's over on our sister channel, eFix Energy? Or are you a bit of a solar skeptic? Send us some pictures of your best installs, tell us about your experiences, or let us know if you've come across any new kit that's making your job easier, and you could be featured on the next episode of the news. And just before we get to your favourite bit of the show, where I reveal last week's challenge words and winners we want to thank our premium partners we couldn't make the news without you first up they're the people who've created the swiss army knife of solar inverters along with all weather batteries very much the boy scouts of the solar industry it's sunsink and testing testing one two testing if you've got something you need to measure or a piece of test equipment to calibrate from multimeters to power quality analyzers then it can only be test instrument solutions are you a bit of a control freak Motor control, that is. If so, with huge stocks and excellent service, check out Crompton Controls. As they said to me in a recent conversation, if we don't have it, then we can build it. Now, who doesn't love a freebie? With their incredibly simple and totally free EV charger management platform, they're helping installers win jobs and save their customers thousands a year. It's Tap Electric. Up next, for all your circuit protection needs, they're like having an Italian star striker in your premiership team. It's Ludum Palazzoli, the best thing to come out of Yorkshire since stainless steel, the home of EV Ultra and other groundbreaking and quality products. It's Doncaster Cables. With an incredible range of equipment from EV charge points through industrial sockets and switches to kit for explosive areas, plus they supplied gear for a Campari factory, so they'll always have a place in my heart, it's Scarmy. Big thanks to you all. We really appreciate your ongoing support for the news.
If you think you know the words that I've smuggled into today's show, pop your guess into the comments. We'll take all the correct guesses and select one at random to be a winner of an eFix goodie bag prize. Answers submitted after about lunchtime on the Thursday after release will not be entered into the draw. Last week's words were screeching and omniscient, and as those are rather strange words to find in an electrical news podcast, many, many of you got them right. So we popped them all into a digital hat and plucked one at random to win, and the winner was... Chesie Kennedy 5692. So well done to you, Chesie. I guess that's what you go by. Make sure you click the Get Involved link to claim your prize. Thanks for listening to this episode of Electrical News Weekly in association with Solar Trade Sales, your easy one-stop shop for all things solar. Make sure you subscribe to receive the next update. Thanks for listening. And until next time, have a great week. Stay safe out there. And remember, there's no such thing as a taut calibrated arm.